Welcome students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. And we're continuing on here with uh, the chapter 13 theory videos um, that looks at annuities and sinking funds. Um, in the last video, I kind of gave my opinion as to why this is the most, uh, this chapter is the most important chapter in the book, Ch basically chapters 12 and 13. Um, but now let's talk about the uh, theory behind that supports my that opinion that I think these are the most important in the book. All right, so um, annuities are classified in basically uh, two ways. There is an ordinary annuity, and there's an or, uh, there is an annuity due. And realize that we also have to pay attention to the concepts of uh, the beginning of a period and the end of a period. Okay, um, and you'll s let me let me sort of diagram this out. When we had a lump sum, right, lump sum. Uh, and you put in $10,000, and it doesn't matter what day, when you put it in here and you start compounding it over time, it be, you know the compounding occurs when you first make that deposit. And since you're only making one deposit, you're, get, you're getting interest on that deposit or that loan or whatever it is from the moment that you, you uh, get that money. Whereas an annuity... Annuity, okay, I'll get it right here sometime. Let me erase it. Okay, whereas I should have just left it like that, okay. Um, you know, depends upon what kind of annuity it is. Whether uh, um, it could be, if this is a period of time, okay, depending upon whether the annuity happens at the beginning of a period or at the end of a period, will make a difference in how much is how much interest is calculated or owed or whatever have you okay now an ordinary annuity you know these are like uh, payments so an ordinary annuity these are kind of like payments that are made at the end of a period okay um, you know these tend to be things that have income coming to you like uh you know it's it's money coming to you like salaries um let's see maybe uh like stock dividends okay Div it ends all right so i mean think about that um now let's just take salaries okay i mean you're going to work from you know let's say january 1st to january 15th okay well, you're going to get paid at the end of the period, okay? So that's why that would be like an ordinary annuity. Now, an annuity due, right, um, these tend to be at the beginning of a period, okay? And these are more, you know, whereas ordinary annuities are inflows of cash, Annuity dues have a tendency to be outflows, okay? You know, things that you have to pay off, like insurance premiums, right? Um, you know, rent. Okay? I mean, uh, think about rent as an example. Okay, so if, if you owe, uh, you know, um, this video is being made on May 1st, okay? Which is actually today's date, all right? You know, so if this is 5-1 and I'm paying my rent, right, you know, for the whole month of May, let's see, there's uh, 31 days in May, um, when am I going to pay my rent? I'm not going to pay my rent at the end of the period, okay? No, I'm paying my rent at the beginning of the period. And notice that that's money going out, so that has a tendency to be an annuity due, right? Now, calculating the future value of an ordinary annuity, okay? Um, as you recall in the, the previous chapters, um, you could have done, uh, when we were talking about doing uh, future value uh, calculations of lump sums, right? Basically, there were, was three ways that you, would cal you can calculate the future value. You know, so this is no surprise because it's the same thing as applied to uh, an ordinary annuity. You know, you can do it manually, you can look it up in a table, or you can use the formula. 
okay? You know, manually being, um, you know, let's say, um, you know, uh, let's say you uh, received, I don't know, your income tax, right? And, uh, you know, that's that happens at the end of the year, right? And let's, oops, end of year. And let's just say that, to keep the number simple, that you get $1,000, okay? And you're able to take that 1000 you know, that $1,000, and it was, uh, you know, you get a percentage of interest, okay, um, you know, during the course of, of that whole next year, right? Uh, you know, you can, you know, and you keep on doing this every year. You keep putting this money in, putting this money in at, at a certain percentage of interest. You know, that is, you know, and you can go and say, okay, well, let's just make numbers easy, 10%, okay? Let me do this here. So let's say that's at 10%. So in the first year, you would earn $100 in interest. Okay, so now you'd have $1,100 in the bank. And then you'd input another $1,000 to the next year, so now you'd have $2,100. But when you, uh, in that next year, at 10%, now you're going to get an additional, so you have $2,100 here, and you get an, you would get an additional, additional $210 because of the 10% interest. So now you'd have $2,310. Okay, and then you'd put in another 1000 the next year, and then you'd have 3310 and 10% of that is 331. So then you have 3641. Okay. See how I'm doing it manually? Same thing. Okay. Um, you know, just like we had done um, for the lump, you know, future value of a lump sum. Right. So you can do it manually. Um, and just like I explained in the previous chapter about mathematicians coming along and creating a formula, all right? And all of the formulas are, are programmed into your calculators and your computers, right? Um, and the formulas, you know, you can look at that formula at the bottom of the page in the textbook and work through the formula by hand, you know, doing the algebra for that. Um, that's still the same. Or you can use the table lookup method, okay? Which is what I recommend, you know, just like I did in the last chapter, okay? now. Here is um, the ordinary annuity table. You know, it's a compound sum of an annuity of one dollar. Okay. Now, the thing about this here is that it's for one dollar. Okay. So, in on this example for table 13-1, they were looking at eight percent um, for three uh, periods. Okay, so the factor that we would use is 3.2464. Okay, well, this is based upon one dollar. So if you were investing a thousand dollars, then you have to multiply that times the thousand dollars. Okay, um, so I'd have the 3.2464 times the one thousand dollars. Let me erase that. Erase that to make it a little neat. Erase all of it to make it look neater. 3.2464 and times the $1,000. Okay, and so it, I'd end up with 32.46.40. Uh, okay, um, so you, you know that's how much it would be co the compounded sum of the annuity. Remember, you're making three payments, and the interest rate is 8%. And I and I started out with $1,000, so I'm putting um, an actual, you know, $3,000 in because I have to put uh, $1,000 in for each period, but I'd end up with uh, 324640. Right. So let me back up. Um, when, you know, when we're looking at calculating the future value of an ordinary annuity, all right, we're basically doing pretty much the same exact thing that we did in the last chapter on the lump sum. You can, you know, figure it out manually looking up in the table or doing by the formula. Now, I'm personally probably going to use the table lookup method and I'll use the um, the tables that are in the textbook, but realize that when we're uh, doing the problems, you're going to have to rely more heavily upon the business math handbook, okay? Um, and because of that, 
I am not going to be reproducing the business math handbook tables and I'm not going to be re uh, reproducing uh, all of the tables for the annuities that you'll see in this chapter because the um, if you look at those you know these tables you'll find that they uh, go uh, to period uh, percentages that are greater than what we have in the book um, and it's just easier you know I'm going to end up starting to reference uh, the the business math handbook and you know just more often and that like I said, without bumbling and stumbling here, <laughs> um, I'm going when I'm actually working through the problems. I'm going to work uh, be actually just using the factor without showing you how to look up the problems, uh, look look them up. Okay, you learned how to do that in the previous chapter, and again, you're going to see that this is repetitive. It's just applying it on a different level of thinking. Okay, so if you have any questions with that, um, I'm going to be moving on to the next video here in theory. Um, and see where we go from there.